Life is all about uncharted territory and trying new things. Join us as we dissect Ruby's summer camp adventures and find out what she learned, not only about the industry, but also herself. The gang's all back together for this podcast, and we're excited to glean all we can from Ruby's summer exploits. Imagine camp registration software that actually gives you more time to do what you love. With UltraCamp, you can effortlessly track attendance, manage staff, streamline registration, and more. Explore now at ultracampmanagement.com slash camp code. Welcome to Camp Code, a podcast brought to you by Go Camp Pro. After 10 years of podcasting, is there anything left to say? You bet. Because just like people grow and change, so does our industry. Each and every year, there are new challenges, new ways of handling situations, new advice from those doing the work, and new ideas to share. Our commitment to intentional leadership training has only grown stronger. Join us for Season 11 of Camp Code as we once again do all that we can to help you develop your best ever leadership training. Now, before we dive into this all important topic, let's take a moment to introduce ourselves. And I'm so excited to say this name first, Ruby. Yay. Oh, hey, uh, I'm Ruby Compton. I'm the Chief Exploration Officer for Ruby Outdoors. I'm based in Western North Carolina in the heart of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And I run a training and support company for camps and outdoor programs. Thank you, and Gabs? And my name is Gabrielle Rail. I'm one of the camp directors at Camp Waro. Camp Waro is an all-girls camp, and we focus on creating a positive environment for gender minorities. Also, my pronouns are she, her. And I'm Beth Allison. I'm co-owner of Camp Hacker and Go Camp Pro. My pronouns are also she, her, and I am a camp consultant and trainer who is super passionate about leadership training. And here we are. The team is back together again. It has been a while since the three of us have been able to be together on a podcast at the same time, and we couldn't be happier. One of the reasons we haven't been together is because Ruby has been traveling and working all kinds of interesting jobs, and one of them is our topic for today. So Ruby, welcome home. We are thrilled to see your face and to hear your voice today, and we can't wait to hear all about your summer experience. So Woo let's dive in. <laughs> All right, Ruby, what did you do this summer and why? Yep. Uh, well, you know, I don't have enough jobs, so I thought I would take on a new job <laughs> this summer. Uh, I continued to work at the girls camp that I work at here in Brevard, and I ran their whitewater rafting program. Um, and I, of course, still ran my training company. So I was teaching lots of lifeguarding and CPR classes and whatnot in the training season. Uh, but then I went up to New England and I worked up at a camp in Western Massachusetts. And part of it was it was close to family. And um, part of it was just like testing out a new model for how my summer might go. And what's interesting is that in the Southeast, we start camp at, you know, early June, like first week of June. So I did all of the summer camp staff training time. I did two weeks of camp and then I flew up to Mass or drove up to Mass and was there for staff training and the first three weeks of camp. <laughs> so, uh, and then what's funny is I came back and like finished out camp here and then went back up and I had the opportunity to work a couple of other, a uh, couple other weeks. And I ended up stepping back from that a little bit, but it, it's a weird way to get the most bang for the buck over the course of the summer. <laughs> and you slept when? Some. I'm not sure. Yeah. Some. Some. All yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. So you've been in charge of your own camp program in the past. So what was it like to work as a staff member for somebody else? What was that experience like for you? Uh, well, I love staff training. So going through staff training again was awesome and not being in charge of it whatsoever. And it all being new to me was super cool. Like I carried around my handy dandy notebook that I <laughs> And getting ready for this podcast, I pulled it out. It's like, oh yeah, we, we learned some really cool stuff and there's some cool tools. And I loved training. Training was super fun. Um, and then my camp experience was a little challenging and we're going to talk about that more um, for a variety of reasons. And, but, but going and being just in like, I'm a new staff member and I'm learning mode was pretty doggone cool. And uh, I would highly recommend it, actually. You learn a lot about yourself as a learner, and I think that makes you a better educator on the flip side when you put yourself in the learner's shoes. Okay, so building off of that then, what did you learn about yourself? 
in this <laughs> process? Um, let's see. What did I learn? Uh, I learned that um, I was not as clear about expectations that I had. And, and there was a misalignment in expectation communication. And so what I thought I had heard about the time commitment I was putting in was different from the time commitment I was then asked to do. And that was where the biggest rub was. I'm like, look, I know I work at summer camp. You're going to sign up for something and then do a lot more. I know that that's a thing (laughs) that happens and that is a standard thing that happens. Uh, but I was working at a day camp and I ended up working with the only overnight program that they offer. So I was staying at camp three nights a week and working on Saturdays when I thought I'd signed up for a Monday to Friday job. So that was uh, wild. Uh, <laughs> and I also, when that was told to me, truthfully, I went into camp director mode of like, well, maybe I just misheard and I don't want to make them have to shuffle everything around because I probably misread something or didn't hear it correctly, or maybe they, they didn't communicate. I don't know, but like, I can't turn around and be like, just kidding. I'm not going to be here on Saturday for the closing of this program. And so as someone who preaches a lot about boundaries, my boundaries like caved a fair amount this (laughs) summer. Uh, But some of it was like, it was my first summer at this camp and I wanted to make a good impression. And uh, this is a camp that there is a possibility that I could have a longer term relationship with really in kind of a pop in and out situation. But I, so I wanted things to go well, uh, but that moment of being like, wait, how many nights do you want me to stay? Wait, did you say Saturday? <laughs> kind of looking at the owner going, okay, I guess I'm doing that. Great. <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're a student of boundaries for life. Uh, and even as much as I preach about it, yeah, I, I still like suck at it sometimes. <laughs> well, when it, ca- when it catches you off guard, that's when I find it really difficult as well. Like the, the. I'm a yes person when it catches me off. It's the best way to get me to do something for you. Catch me off guard. I'll be like, sure, I'll do it. No problem. <laughs> well, and just I'm on to, tuck that I, away for later. <laughs> I think about in the negotiation session that my dear friend Maggie Howe gave at the Women in Camp Summit several mm-hmm. years ago now, where she talked about often we bring too much empathy to the table. And that was 100% what it was. It's like, I know what it's like to be that camp director looking at somebody being like, cool, see you Saturday. And they're like, what? I'm not coming Saturday. And you're like, no, yeah, of course you are. And I was like, I don't, that's not the conversation I want to be having right now. So I brought a lot of empathy to that. And it meant that my summer did not time-wise, it was not spent the ways I was exactly expecting it to be. Um, And certainly makes me think about how I'm going to communicate with this program going forward. Anything else you learned about yourself, your learning style, anything Yeah, I, um, I'm going to talk more about this after our ad break, but I, I'm excited to, to dig into like the, the balance of inclusion and discomfort. And, uh, that is the problem, not problem, the conflict that I've been chewing on since I worked at camp. This was a camp that day camp, high adventure. We did canoeing and climbing and mountain biking offsite. Um, I was primarily working with CITs, but had a, a regular week of day camp as well. And it is very much a camp that encourages, has made the transition from like climb to the top of this ropes course element and do it wholly to there's no top. There's only like mm. the lowest point you can be and the highest point you can be in any place in there is fine. You choose that level of challenge, right? Uh, and so there's nothing right or wrong. It's just, what is the challenge for you? All of that I'm on board with. But I had some challenges with some of the methodology about um, how much we let kids opt out of stuff and, mm. you know, put up boundaries that I was like, guy, see that boundary. But usually I would just plow right through that because this is a moment that's a growing moment and you need to be uncomfortable and yeah. I can help facilitate that. And so that is something I've been wrestling with a lot that I'm excited to dig into more. Okay. And one last question before the break. Are there things that you would recommend about dropping ourselves into your kind of situation? Say one of us decided to do that next year, um, where it's an established program and we're just coming in to be a a staff member. Um, When we've had that experience of being the one in charge. Yeah. And I said this abundantly on my staff application come with a learner's heart, um, come knowing that 
like, you're not going to change anything. And I didn't want to change anything about this camp. There are certainly things that if I was in charge, I would do differently, but that doesn't mean that I'm right or they're right. It's just like, that's not my responsibility. Um, So I think anytime you're in that first year anywhere, this this could be even just, you're starting a job at a new camp. um, Just be a learner, just watch, pay attention, ask questions um, and, and go from there and, uh, and, and what you need to gain will be gained out of that. Perfect. That's a great place to stop. So we're going to just take a short break to hear from our sponsor. And when we come back, we're going to hear more from Ruby. For our Camp Code listeners, here's an exclusive offer to enhance staff retention year round. Get UltraCamp staff communication calendar with free customizable email templates at ultracampmanagement.com slash camp code. Remember what drew you to the camp experience? UltraCamp knows it wasn't for paperwork. That's why they've crafted an all-in-one platform to streamline your program management. Say goodbye to the hassle of learning and managing multiple platforms to run your camp. With UltraCamp, you can easily register and manage campers, generate and direct communication, organize schedules and activities, process payments and donations. UltraCamp's goal is to help their clients spend less time in the office and more time doing what they love. Want to know if UltraCamp is the right fit for you? They offer free customized demo sessions so you can see their software in action. And you can sign up at ultracampmanagement.com slash campcode. All right, we are back. So Ruby, we we started out about asking you about your experience in this role. What did you learn about the camp industry serving in this role for the summer? What do we do or could we start doing that you learned that has a positive effect on campers or staff or some of those lessons you pulled out of that? Okay, I've got two that I want to talk about. So number one is expectations. Communicate, communicate, (laughs) communicate expectations. Like more than you think you have to. The camp that I was working at is very much a camp that has homegrown their staff. There were on a staff team of 50 or 60, there were like four of us that had zero experience with camp prior to starting on staff. And so there was a lot of assumptions about what folks knew. And I think that's where Mm -hmm. some of the miscommunication happened as far as, you know, what I thought I was doing and and what I wasn't, what I ended up doing. Um, So I would say, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, and I would say that, that I'm stumbling into that as somebody, as um, a director that's leading staff members that had, um, um, some a gap year, uh, either at camp or outside of camp. But then there's certain things that I assume people know, and it's um, it's 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 something I'm coming up with as well. It's it's a I think it's something for for all of us to pay attention to. And and the practical piece to that I think is turn back to those new staff members who maybe only have only worked with you for 100%. a year and say, hey, what did we miss? <laughs> like, what did you feel like you didn't have? What I think there's actually no person better than those folks to sit down and write some of the descriptions for what traditions are or what questions a staff member might have. And so that's something to consider. Like, it's not all entirely on you to come up with all of this written or video or however that content ends up being, but you need to be the one who puts the wheels in motion and to recognize that even if you think everybody knows exactly what you're talking about, like, no, really outline it. Like, these are the dates for camp. If you work with this program, this is what the expectations are going to be. This is when you're going to be at camp. Um, We also had staff meetings on Fridays uh, that we stayed until seven. And it's like, I don't remember that being anywhere in the paperwork. We got fed dinner, you know, cool. We got to order our pizza, like, cool. But it's again, it's just like such an integral part of this camp's community and this culture that they always do it. And someone who is new to camp is like, so like, when do we get to leave today? And I didn't realize <laughs> I was going to be staying here till this late. And, and again, it's just like, you just don't think about it when you have the blinders on of like, I'm just doing camp and everybody knows what's happening here at camp. So uh, I, I can't say that enough. And then what's funny is when I came back to North Carolina and came back to the girls camp, 
uh, <laughs> I found myself in the midst of dealing with a, a very similar like expectations mismanaged situation there too, where we had staff that were living on camp that were upset about additional expectations that have been put on them and additional time and how the money was not quite adding up to them compared to the day staff. And so I was like, this is just the theme of the summer. Like we all <laughs> need to to take a step back. And, and in that job, the role that I filled there on the adventure staff is one that for many years has been commuting staff who are relatively local. So within 15, 20 minutes of camp and, and, and it's like a sweet job for commuting staff that fit that bill. But for folks who are living on camp, suddenly the responsibilities morph or for folks that have to commute an hour or more to get to camp, it's not as worth it. And it's not as sweet of a job. So I think looking at some of those job responsibilities and jobs that you have and go like, is are what we representing for what this job is? Is this still who we're hiring for it? And are we asking too much, too little, you know, thinking that we're offering the same job, but really we're piling on a bunch of different things onto a job that we said was this, but it's actually this. And I think long gone are the days of the staff contract that lists all the expectation and then puts at the bottom and any other jobs deemed necessary by the camp director. Um, I think those days are gone and we need to be more specific and think all that kind of stuff through. Long gone. And it's like, and if you're somebody that's like, oh, I still have that in my stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so did I like this summer and saw it. And I was like, <laughs> it was felt very uncomfortable. I was like, oh, that feels like we've just. We used to have it in us. ours. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And just we, stuff we comes up and sometimes you have to ask, but yeah. Yeah. And I think different too, between day camp and overnight camp, because 100%. overnight camp, you know, the staff is staying and they're not going anywhere. Um, so very different to think those things through, depending on what kind of camp you're running. And yeah. building that and trust with those new staff members and saying, hey, we'd love to hire you post camp, pay attention, you know, anything we want to hear from you during the summer, but also after summer, we would love to chat with you. Um, I know we're doing that with uh, some of our uh, first year staff members and there's nuggets in there that um, I, I didn't even think about, honestly. So I'll, I'll throw out my, my other like big thing that I've been chewing on, like I said, is this, okay. like the, the question of where is, does the Venn diagram of inclusion and discomfort and type two fun, like where do all of those things meet because, and, and like holding boundaries. So I'll, I'll paint a picture of, I had multiple times this summer that at that camp that I had kids ranging in age from like eight to 13, that would give me a line like, well, I don't feel safe doing that. So I'm not going to do it. And it was like, but yes. I, I don't feel safe sweeping to... the cabin. Right. Yeah. It like, is I don't... emotionally triggering to me. Yes. Yeah. Dust is a trigger point. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, so for me, it was happening most often at the ropes course. It does not feel safe for me to put on a harness and my, I mean, like all my air bells go off. So I'm like, I, you're literally putting on a harness to be safer. It's safety equipment. It's like being told, I don't feel safe putting on a personal flotation device. Like it's, <laughs> it's there for your safety. And so recognizing my toolbox is grossly out of date for what is needed on the front lines right now. And it wasn't until the end of this, this particular session that I had a group of kids that let's just put it this way. When we're doing our closing circle, like all the kids are like, yeah, my least favorite part was this. It was the van rides. I hated the van rides. They were really rough. And then the one kid was like, you know, my favorite part was the van rides. Like, <laughs> does that sum up how that week went? Yeah, <laughs> it was that. I week. love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw one of our directors come and uh, that director was just kind of hanging out while we were doing a ropes element and very quickly, and I think also knows this camper, picked up on the dynamic that was happening. The like, I'm the victim, but I'm going to, 
you know, call stuff out or blame things or be the center of attention or just make life harder on everybody else because of my own stuff. Right. And she just quite frankly looked at looked at this camper and just said really point blank, like, I'm noticing this pattern. And I understand that that's frustrating. And I'm also feeling very frustrated about what's happening here. So what can we do? And I was like, oh, I could have said that and it didn't even occur to me. That was where to go with it. So, uh, so yeah, I just felt like my toolbox is out of date. And I do think there are some larger conversations about, okay, you're telling me you have somebody that has sensory processing issues. So it's very uncomfortable for them to put on a harness. And so are, am I allowed to push them to put on a harness for a minute or two, or is that like not within my wheelhouse? And how do I have that conversation when somebody says, I don't feel safe to do something like, I want to honor that boundary. Thank you for bringing that up to me. And we have the group's needs to consider here. What can we do? And how can I help push kids through some of these uncomfortable moments that, I don't want to be traumatic or triggering, but also that that's just some of life is being uncomfortable sometimes. And so finding that line and walking that line well, I'm still chewing over how to do that. That sounds like a future podcast topic mm -hmm. that we should dig into at some point. I well, thanks I for also, oh, go ahead. I, I also wonder if, um, not if, but I, I think there's also for me, like a little bit of the awareness here is is that sometimes as the director or the boss or however you, s I feel that we have more leniency to, to say things like I'm noticing this pattern, blah, 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 blah. I, um, I often do volunteer, um, in, in places that are just like, I'm not in charge. I don't know much about the subject, but you know, I find it's helpful and things that I would naturally do within my own organization and step up and step in, I don't do in these situations because I don't, I'm still learning the infrastructure. I'm still learning what the culture is. Um, I'm much better at asking for help than when I was a young staff member. I'm, I'm pretty good at note of, of, of recognizing that. But I think it also paints a picture of no matter your extremely skilled uh, Ruby um, individual and that you're stumbling in these little, in these areas, I think it also speaks to just the, just get, how do we get our staff members, you know, comfortable to be able to, to, to do these things. It's, it's difficult sometimes when you're not in charge in charge, there's so much more leniency when, when we are in charge, we, we can take, um, you know, creative ways, uh, forward. Whereas when you're trying to please your boss, as well as do a good job, there's more, there's more constraints. And more things we need to teach our staff. Yeah. Yeah. To make them comfortable. Okay. Final hot seat question for you, Ruby. What are some things that you experienced this summer that made you go, hmm, we need to work on this in our camps to provide a more intentional experience? Was it something Ooh. great that that camp did or something that they could work on too? Doesn't matter either way or both. Yep. Okay. So two things, one quick one, one a little bit longer. So number one is... Uh, this was a camp that had had a loss of a community member. They had a high school student who had died at a school event. It was a medical issue. There were people also in the community who had been there when it occurred, watched CPR be performed on their friend. Oh, I mean, this boy. is a traumatic, traumatic thing that happened. And I, the very first thing that was said to us as a staff, when, you know, we came in, we did a little icebreaker activity. And then as we gathered, the owner said, so one of our people is not here. And I know that that is really hard. It was like, welcome to camp. And one of our, and I was like, what? Oh, What's boy. going on here? <laughs> and, and so I'm not mad that that was acknowledged the way that it was. I think it did need to be brought forward earlier mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Um, it would have been nice to have had a heads up on that. <laughs> right. Again, there's only like four of us that didn't know this. And so that, that was handled interestingly. And I think the best that they could in the moment. Uh, but I, I think that consider that, right? Like what is the effect of some of the stuff that you're saying in that first hour on people who are brand new to your facility, your site, 
et cetera. And, and be really conscientious and intentional about what's coming out of your mouth, especially as leadership in that first hour, <laughs> because it was a little disconcerting. It was like, this is a weird mood to set. And I'm glad it was uh, uh, like talked about, but also, okay, now let's go like play on the ropes course. Weird. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think not just for the new staff, but timing wise for the return staff who lived through it was also an interesting choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, agreed. And and you could like feel the wind out of the sails yeah. at that moment. So that was, it was just an interesting, like, oh, okay. One, I'm in a really tight knit community. They all know each other and I am an outsider. Like that was a thing that I felt in that moment. And two, like, okay, this is a thing. And it, it hovered like a cloud over the whole summer. And oh part of that was that I had a, a co-leader who was very close to this person. And so it was just a, a really big part of my job there was kind of managing that situation. Um, so it was interesting and something to be conscientious of. And I think something that is probably affecting more and more camps every year as we have violence and, and terrible things and, and hard things in the world happen. So just consider how we're approaching those things. Um, my, my number two thing is um, I got to work for two weeks with their CIT program. And the CIT uh. program has cool things that they did. They built their whole CIT program around the lifeguarding curriculum. So everybody comes out of the CIT program trained as a lifeguard, assuming they pass all the things they have to pass. And so everybody on staff there is a lifeguard and you go through that training when you're 14, 15, 16, you can't become certified till you're 15, but the 14 year olds could still do the training and, and get ready for actually testing out the next year. And then every year they run a, a research class for anybody that's up. Um, so I thought that was a cool idea. And then they had that sprinkled throughout the week to kind of carry some gravity and weight and seriousness to the program while also then teaching them all the other things like building anchors for natural rock climbing sites and how to take kids canoeing and how to take kids mountain biking and how to facilitate programming on both low ropes and high challenge course options. I mean, it was a pretty like beefy <laughs> program That sounds amazing. where they were, they were coming out with some real, real skills. And we had some very cool evening talks about um, the what ifs, the what if I have a camper who doesn't want to blah or does want to blah or, you know, whatever, really, really serious to really, really not serious. And had some phenomenal conversations with the teenagers. All of this is outlined too with them all like holding rope and like practicing their knots. So as far as a CIT program goes, I think it was one of the top notch ones I've ever seen. And this That's was from great. a day camp. It was the overnight program and six days, but it was from a day camp. <laughs> and so I think that if a day camp can do that really well, I think that that's something a lot more of us can do better. That's great. Thank you, Ruby. Thanks for letting so us cool. pick your brain and, and hear about your summer. All right, Gab, we are at that time in our recap, podcast. Recap, recap, recap. Where um, we get to recap Ruby's summer. Yes, we do. Well- uh a spoiler alert ruby did a lot she worked for others lessons were learned um one thing is uncomfortable is a muscle that we need to practice but please give staff those tools on knowing where the limits are when it comes to those type of things um learning is a mindset and that's helpful in any context but especially when you're working for other people hire your first year staff members to help you plan next year's training treat yourself, I'd like to say, if you hire those individuals. Uh, too much empathy at uh, the table can hinder boundaries. So for those of us <laughs> in the room that recognize yourself in that, it's a very good little being like, are you empathizing? How to take a little bit of a, of a, a step back? And the sentence, I'm noticing a pattern when dot, 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 is a wonderful sentence to have. Um, Ruby, I think a lot of camp professionals can benefit from uh, working for other people if it's for a small little volunteer, you know, afternoon, just to see what it feels like when it comes to um, being led by others and maybe some tweaks that we can do along the way. But we certainly learned a lot from you. Thank you, 
Thank you for sharing your experiences from this summer. Thanks Great. for listening. Thanks, Gab. All right. Here's how you can get involved uh, in our podcasting. Tell us your thoughts on this episode or any other by using the hashtag camp code. You can let us know topics you would like us to discuss, any guests you recommend we have on the show, and any great leadership training tips that you have to share. We would love to hear from you. And if you found our podcast to be useful, we'd love a rating and review in your podcasting app. Here's how you can contact us if you'd like to do so individually. So Ruby, how do they find you? You can email me ruby at rubyoutdoors.com. You can also find me on Instagram at rubyoutdoors. Thank you. And Gabs? You can uh, see where I work at waro.com or you can get in touch with me at info at waro.com. Thank you. And you can find out about what I do at gocamp.pro or email me directly at beth at gocamp.pro. And for our next podcast, we're going to be talking about little moments in camp that taught us about how to best set people up for success. And as usual, our final segment on each podcast is a best practice for leadership training. And you can tell us any ideas you have for best practices using that hashtag camp code. And this week, our best practice is going to come from Ruby. It's me again. Okay. So it's the Ruby I, show today. I want to throw out. Uh, again, I I learned so much this summer, and for the, again there being an, a misalignment in expectations, I'm still really grateful for the time that I got to spend at this camp, and it's one that you know if I continue working there in some capacity, I'm going to be challenged with the speaking my expectations a little and my needs a little more to the to the front, um, but. What I can say is I think they did something really genius with their CIT program that I complimented the director on. They did actually sit down with me at the end of my time there and asked me about feedback they had, which right there, smart, well done. Thank you for taking that time. Mm -hmm. um, but they run their CIT program, a session of their CIT program in their first week of camp, and they limit the number of campers that are the, the CITs, and they fill the rest of it with their new staff. So people who, those other three people, in addition to me, uh, who had no experience at this particular camp, went through the CIT program. It got them through their lifeguarding cert without having to do that additionally ahead of time, whatever. It also let them see basically all of the hard skills that we learned during training again and more time to practice with them. It did create a, an interesting dynamic of we had staff and campers who were together and like working together and like ultimately they're maybe two, two to four weeks down the road going to be working together again. But there's a there was a time that like some of them are going to be staff and some of them are going to be camp. So you got to figure out that kind of strange dynamic. But it was genius <laughs> as far as getting to the end of staff training and going, who I'm super overloaded. I don't remember half the things I was told to then come around and get to see it all one more time. Brilliant, brilliant. And when I talked to the director about it, she was like, yeah, we always do that. And we always run that session with fewer CIT candidates because we want to be able to put those brand new staff in it. And I was like, genius. Very smart. Thank you. Well, that wraps up today. Camp Code is part of the Go Camp Pro Podcast Network, and you can check out all our other podcasts at Go Camp dot pro slash podcasts and this year we're adding a new one called the pudding because the proof is in the pudding you can join travis allison and dr mandy baker as they share scientific proof to improve our staff recruitment and retention and you'll find the pudding in the camp hacker podcast feed and from all of us here at camp code thanks for the listening friends mm -hmm.